So I once upon a time mentioned that I prefer card scrapers to sandpaper because you have to keep buying sandpaper forever and you only have to buy a card scraper once. Well, if you're bad at making card scrapers, that's not entirely true. You see, I made this out of an old saw blade and it was so old that the pitting on the metal was so deep that I can't get a good edge off of it. So I bought instead this scraper, taping knife, not scraper, with the intention of drilling these out and turning it into a card scraper. Maybe in a video, like the one that you're watching right now. All right, let's do that. I'm kinda eyeballing the size of that. I don't care about this handle, so I'm just clamping it in there as hard as I want, just to make sure that it doesn't go anywhere. From where it's riveted here, I can tell that if I break that section on both sides, or it should be pretty easy to just pull the rivets out, so I'm gonna do that. It's hard to get any purchase, but I'm pretty sure these rivets are made out of, like, aluminum or something like that for how easy they're cutting in. I only have this clamped flat the way that I have it so that you can see it. Otherwise, it would be upright this way facing me, but it's harder to get the camera angle that way. Every once in a while, I'll take a pencil and rub some of the pencil lead in and around there because graphite is a solid state lubricant. That makes this a little easier. The bolt is sticking out high enough that I'm just gonna lay it in the vise and try and trap it. When I got a good grip on it. There we go. Got that yanked out, which means this should come next. There we go. And this, this will be our card scraper, as soon as we get this paper off. Now, I could scrape this paper off, but I think the easiest way to do that would be either to hit it with a heat gun or to use um, some solvent, probably alcohol. So, isopropyl. But that's not really necessary for our, our present here, because I'm going to go ahead and call that surface sufficiently polished. So now what I'm going to do instead, I'm going to set my soft jaws in. Put that so that it's just peeking out. Ideally, I would have some, some wider soft jaws that accommodate the entire size of the card scraper, but since I don't, now the reason that this other card scraper that I've got here didn't work is because of all of that surface texturing that you see here. The two sides are going to be pre-textured for me, but that still leaves the edge there, which needs to be flat and square enough for me. You could go down it in this fashion, but that seems like it's not going to work super well because it would be very easy, if you're going down it this way, to roll it. And I don't want to do that. So to try and keep it as flat and square as possible, I'm going to be draw filing it, which means that I need to keep track of which side should go in which direction. Because if it's cutting in this direction on the top, then it will be cutting in the opposite direction on the bottom. You know how you can tell there's a burr? You'll catch it on your fingernails. Check this out. So if you don't have a whole lot of feeling in your fingers because of whatever reason, maybe you just recently hit yourself with a hammer, you can still check that way. Now, once you have the burr from the draw filing like that, that is not enough. That is not your final burr. The way that you actually want to do that is using something like the side of a screwdriver or a gouge or something like that, you have a couple of options for setting burrs of different sizes. One of them would just be to, in approximately the same way, draw a file this way, but cant it about, about that far. You only want to be off by about five degrees because any more than that and the, the pitch of the burr that you turn is going to be set too high and it's not going to perform nicely. Another way would be to run the burnishing rod on its face down like this while it's laying flat on something 
hard and wide enough to be supportive. Then flip it around so that it's in that same position and then turn that burr outwards. That will take a much heavier cut than only setting the burr right on the edge there because you've essentially extruded the metal twice from one from this side and one from this side. So let's see how that performs. I have a burr turned on this, but this is the thing that I'm replacing. It doesn't really work. So to show you what I was starting with, let's do a couple of runs with just this. Now, you might be able to see some shavings in there because it, it inconsistently has a burr in some spots and not in others. But if I just press on it with my finger, that's all powder. That There's a couple of shavings in there, but it mostly just blows away. The shavings are supposed to be fine enough that you could easily mistake them for dust, but they're not dust. Now let's try this burr that I turned. Right away, you can see a huge difference, and if I tap on it with my finger, it stays together in one, like, springy, stringy piece. This isn't great. What I should be seeing is a full-length shaving, but this is just straight off the file. The point that I'm making here is that it really doesn't take much to have actual shavings, and when you run your finger over at this spot, it should not be fuzzy at all. It should be crystal smooth as though you had just cut it with a chisel. Get it off, 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 get it off. Isopropyl alcohol or some similar solvent. Away, away, get 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 off, 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 get off. Be clean. If you have a drill bit that's larger than the diameter of the hole, you could just use that, but since this one is not larger than the diameter of the hole, I'm instead going to use my speedy sharp to remove the burr from these holes. The burr's not going to do anything, but it would make it nicer to handle. Alternately, you could use a countersink bit, because this is pretty soft steel, although I wouldn't recommend using that on anything that was harder, like a saw plate. Non-slip pad. Boy Scout whetstone for one dollar. water. Making sure to go back and forth across the face of the stone so I don't wear a track. shavings, not dust. Remember to use a light touch. You are just passing over it like with any other edged tool. You are not bearing down into it because this tiny little burr of an edge is very delicate. In doing all these reshoots, trying to get footage of me producing good shavings, like this little pile right here, notably that one, I've had to turn multiple burrs on this card scraper, and I'm rapidly developing a good technique for it. So I'm going to use a different edge just because I already, I already just turned to that one, but here's the basic procedure. Get it almost flat and up very slightly and turn the initial burr. And I've got it right almost on the edge right there. There's a little bit of a gap. Then instead of trying to get it upright and turning a burr that way, I'm hanging it over the edge, supporting it with my fingers, and setting it against this corner right here, so I can very finely control my angle while I'm looking down it this way. Because I want it to just barely eke out this way. But I can but it's very easy to overdo it going this way. So I flip it over, and now when I'm coming at an angle like that to work on this edge on the bottom here. 
It's much nicer. I'm going to start flat and I'm pushing in this way. Now, I'm, I'm, as I'm going back and forth, I'm going to slowly roll it out. If you've turned the burr correctly, then you'll be able to feel when it engages and it pulls itself to task. So you don't have to push down at all. All of your pressure should be forward. Those were several notes that I didn't hear anybody talk about in any of the other card scraper videos. So now you've got it here. And if you want more practical advice like this, leave a comment letting me know so and subscribe for future updates.